The main story is at 7 on this Thursday. Wholesale price of eggs set at $13 per dozen for the next 45 days as government and layer farmers hatch a compromise. Flash flood warning in effect as a strong tropical wave influences weather conditions across the leewards. Scores of additional citizens and residents to receive sight-saving cataract surgery as part of a program spearheaded by the government. And four in police custody following weapon and drug seizure. Those are the main stories at 7. The news in detail starts. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the ABS Evening News on this Thursday. A special welcome to those joining us on our various online platforms. My name is Garfield Burford. Uh, Patrice returns tomorrow. Let's begin with a major developing story at this hour, and it is that uh, it's, a, it's an update to a story that we have been closely tracking over the past few days. The wholesale price of locally produced eggs will be $13 per dozen for the next 45 days. That's because the government and the country's Layer Farmers Association have hatched a compromise following first talks. Members of the cabinet uh, gathered yesterday to consider a report from Agriculture Minister Honorable Anthony Smith Jr. on that matter. He is chairing a working group appointed by Cabinet to review the proposed wholesale price increase on locally produced eggs. Now, following a meeting of this working group with the representatives from the Layer Farmers Association, an agreement was reached to work col collaboratively to facilitate an in-depth review and analysis of the pricing of locally produced eggs. As a result of this first development, the government will reinstate the requirement for importers of eggs to pay all applicable duties and taxes. The requirement is also being reinstituted for importers of eggs to obtain a license from the Ministry of Trade. Cabinet had indicated a 60-day waiver on both these requirements at its meeting last week. A bit later on, during our newscast, you'll be hearing from the Minister for Agriculture, Lands, Fisheries and the Blue Economy, Honorable Anthony Smith Jr., as he comments on this matter. He spoke with our news team this afternoon. We're also following a developing story that you might very well be very well aware of, and it is that the Antigua Property Meteorological Services has upgraded the flash flood watch to a warning. That warning is in effect until when this broadcast ends at 8 this evening, unless it is extended. Residents in low-lying or flood-prone areas are being urged to take action to safeguard life and property. The Met Office says weather conditions across the Leeward Islands are being influenced by a very active tropical wave which has been producing moderate to heavy showers. Police, meanwhile, are cautioning motorists to take extra care on the roadways and to avoid driving through large bodies of stagnant water or swift running streams. We will have the latest during the weather report and forecast later on in the ABS Evening News. Matters now of healthcare and scores of additional Antiguans and Barbudans are to receive sight-saving cataract surgery as part of an initiative spearheaded by the government of this country. Or Brianna Anthony was, has the very latest on what has been labelled as a visionary partnership between the government and the Dr. Ronnie Bola of the Trinidad Eye Hospital. Since 2019, Dr. Buller and his team at Trinidad Eye Hospital, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, has been performing cataract surgeries in Antigua and Barbuda. This week, approximately 120 persons will benefit from the program. Chief Surgeon at Trinidad Eye Hospital, Dr. Ronnie Buller, notes that this partnership with the government of Antigua and Barbuda is crucial. It enables the leveraging of expertise and resources to address the increasing demand for cataract surgeries in Antigua and Barbuda. When we do the cataract surgeries and, and in the early stage, the surgery has a much higher um, outcome, a much better outcome and much lower complication rate than if you leave it long. So it's, much, it's important to keep checking your vision. Once a year is probably the recommendation. This cataract surgery partnership has brought the total number of procedures performed in Antigua to 780 since 2019. On Thursday, the 26th of September, the 1,000th patient received cataract removal. Dr. Bula expresses his emotions regarding this significant milestone. 
to give a thousand patients that joy in the region really for us is, is such such an amazing thing for the team uh, and for everybody involved the staff in in Celeste Bird the ministry medical benefits everybody who contributed to making this happen um, gets a real joy out of it the patients they come back they bring you little gifts you know it's really an amazing thing from that point of view he highlights that it's not just about treating patients he also takes joy in sharing knowledge with other healthcare professionals at the hospital be able to transfer knowledge when we get here to the staff here and to everybody we do a lot of teaching a lot of training and and there's a lot of joy in seeing others learn and develop as well. Meanwhile, Dr. Buller notes that discussions have taken place with the Minister of Health about ensuring consistent eye care services going forward. The Minister of Health has been very supportive of this program and that's why we've been able to achieve so many surgeries um, over the period because he has really driven uh, um, all these uh, initiatives. We've been in, 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 in discussions with him and, and others to develop uh, more and more services, screening services. This marks a significant milestone for the care teams at Sir Lester Bird Medical Center and Trinidad Eye Hospital who are committed to minimizing preventable blindness in Antigua and Barbuda. Brianna Anthony for ABS News. Meanwhile, staff at Celeste Bird Medical Center say they are continuing to do their part to preserve the eye health of this country's citizens. Here's more again from uh, Aubrey Anthony. The Sir Lester Bird Medical Center offers comprehensive eye care services for individuals. The hospital aims to enhance access to essential eye health services, contributing to the overall well-being of the community. We have an eye screening clinic that is open to the public. You can come make your appointments out front um, in the outpatient clinic and it's actually a $20 charge per person. That eye screening clinic runs all year, Monday to Friday, you make your appointments and you follow your appointment. Patients can receive evaluations, treatments and preventative care to help maintain their vision and address any eye related issues. We pretty much diagnose everything, we do a complete exam for your $20 and then if it is that we need to refer you for further um, testing, we do that, as well as if you need, for example, surgeries, we organize that as well. Dr. Allen highlights the main eye health cases affecting the general population. We have a lot of diabetic retinopathy, so in our population as well, especially in the Caribbean, we have a lot of diabetes. And with that, of the years, especially if you're not taking good care of yourself, you can get retinopathy, which is affectation to the retina itself due to the diabetes over the number of years. With that, it causes a lot of problems. As we know, diabetes is a multifactorial disease. It covers, it covers everything, all different areas. It affects the kidneys, skin, heart. The dedicated team at the hospital is committed to providing high quality care to ensure that everyone in Antigua and Barbuda can benefit from improved eye health. Brianna Anthony for ABS News. Brianna, thanks. Meanwhile, the Board of Education, the BOE, has donated supplies and equipment to the pediatric department at Celeste Bird Medical Center aimed at enhancing the hospital experience for children. The donation has been welcomed by the department, which caters to the health of the nation's youngest citizens. This donation includes a variety of items such as chairs, infusion pumps, materials, and clocks. Renata Joseph, director of the Board of Education, emphasized that this contribution reflects a mutual commitment to improving the quality of care for young patients. We do believe that these, this contribution will significantly enhance the health care services offered to the young patients. And we do hope that this initiative will inspire other persons within our community to join us in providing other health care supplies. The board's coordinator, Jean Anthony, points to the positive impact these resources have on the emotional well-being of children during their recovery. Our corporate support shows that we have been doing our job, our responsibility, um, investing in young minds, um, young and developing minds. And so we hope that you know, this um, donation is something that will be continuous and more often because we see the need 
to you know reach out to the young ones. Head of the pediatric department at Sir Lester Bird Medical Center, Dr. Siobhan Bell Jarvis says this enduring partnership highlights the essential role of community organizations in enhancing health care services for children in our nation. So we are happy, proud to accept on behalf not only of the pediatric department but the families that we serve and even the administration and board of the Sir Lester Bird Medical Center these items that will go a very long way in making the difference in a child's life. These donations reflect community commitment to supporting families during challenging times while fostering a positive health care environment. Brianna Anthony for ABS News. Let's stay with the subject of health care because the Antigua, Antigua Barbuda has announced the establishment of a National Childhood Cancer Registry. Head of the Department of Pediatrics at Celeste Bird Medical Center, Dr. Siobhan Bell Jarvis, is announcing an initiative focused on gathering comprehensive data on childhood cancer across this nation. Take a listen. We do have figures that we're trying to put together in a registry. As a matter of fact, we have a formal training next month for a childhood cancer registry. So this is like fresh off the press. Because at the end of the day, we want to be able to appropriately track our children who have been diagnosed with cancer. She emphasizes that this development is crucial as part of a larger commitment to enhancing pediatric health services in the Trinidad State whether it be overseas coming back to Antigua or Antigua going overseas, whether in public practice or private practice. And so registry is important. Now, stakeholders are optimistic that the registry will pave the way for enhanced treatment protocols and support systems for families dealing with childhood cancer. Dr. Siobhan Bill Jarvis was a guest on Tuesday's House Calls on ABS as part of the obs observance of September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. A major developing story now from the justice system. The High Court has ruled in favor of the principles of the Peace, Love and Happiness or PLH project in Barbuda in a case filed by the Barbuda Council regarding land lease payments. Prime Minister Arnold McGaston Brown shared the details in a social media post this, this evening. He notes that Barbuda Council sought to dispute the PLH's contribution to the airport as future rent payments and claimed US $1 million in unpaid rent. However, the council has lost the case in court. We'll hear details tomorrow evening during the ABS Evening News from the government's lead attorney in this matter, Senior Counsel Anthony Astefan. We'll update you on this major developing story in relation to a case that was adjudicated by the courts. We're expecting that we will have details from a written judgment uh, the PLH uh, was taken to court, or certainly the government was taken to court, in relation to uh, Barbuda Council being the claimants, the Barbuda Council losing that case. Well, let's stay with matters from the courts now, because Lashanti Cooper will face trial in the High Court for allegedly causing the death of Keen Gregoire by dangerous driving. Well, authorities say Cooper was driving a car that crashed along All Saints Road on the 18th of May last year, killing Gregoire who was a passenger in the car. The prosecution claims Cooper was speeding or driving in a manner that put the public at risk. Her attorney, Michael Archibald, says his client is reserving her defense at this time. The case has been committed to the January assizes when Cooper will get her first opportunity to plead to the charge. Well, four individuals are in police custody following the discovery of an unlicensed firearm as well as ammunition and cannabis allegedly in their possession. Today, police executed a search warrant on a property at Liberta and seized one 9mm firearm and several rounds of ammunition along with a portion of cannabis. Here's more because the men were then arrested and taken in for questioning. In a separate incident, two residents of Clarkskill were arrested and taken into custody on Thursday after the police searched their home and found over 100 rounds of different caliber ammunition and a quantity of cannabis in their possession. They are also being questioned by law enforcers. Well, police say from January 1 this year to present, they have seized 47 illegal firearms and over 400 rounds of ammunition from the nation's streets. Several people were arrested and charged for firearm-related offenses, resulting in several convictions, fines, and prison sentences. The police say they are committed to intensifying their crime-fighting measures to rid the streets of illegal firearms and keep crime under control. 
Of course, as we have been reporting, uh, both houses of parliament have approved a suite of legislative measures aimed at tamping down the uptick in crime, part of which will include uh, imposing tougher sentences for gun crimes. You know, Kareem Edwards' challenge against his committal on a charge of causing death by dangerous driving has been denied. Here's more because Acting Chief Magistrate Dexter Wason ruled in favor of the prosecution today, saying Edwards will have to face trial for his alleged involvement in the crash that killed 21-year-old medical student Kenneth Matthew. The incident uh, happened two years ago on Friars Hill Road and also left another student, as well as Priyane Dias, uh, severely injured. Edwards' attorney, Wendell Alexander, had filed an application challenging the committal. But while the magistrate says the lawyer raised what, pertin per what pertinent issues, he adds they are that matter should be resolved at trial. Edwards is expected to be committed to the High Court on October 23, two-year anniversary of the crash. Well, a Cuban national is being deported after illegally entering Antigua Barbuda on a party boat. Here's more because 26-year-old uh, Maria Lopez admitted to overstaying in St. Kitts and Nevis and disembarking in Antigua without the required immigration clearance. She also failed to present herself to immigration officers upon arrival. Lopez was arrested at VC Bird International Airport Monday after buying a ticket back to St. Kitts. She faced multiple charges and pleaded guilty to all of them. Senior Magistrate Nayo Emanuel reprimanded and discharged Lop Lopez but a deportation order has been signed to remove her from the country. She's currently being held at a detention center until her scheduled deportation tomorrow. You know, two men accused of separate murders will have to wait until November to know if their cases will proceed to the high court. Here's more of this developing story because Dennis or Dennis Josiah charged with the March 31 murder of Ricaldo Joseph in Old Road and Clarence Cameron accused of killing Omari Graham in Bendel's village on May 5 appeared in court on Wednesday. Both men appeared before senior magistrate Nayo Emanuel but procedural delays pushed their committal hearings to November 27. Now, a Jamaican man, once accused of attempted murder and unlawful confinement, has been deported after the alleged victims decided to drop the charges. Deron Campbell, who resided in Bendels, was accused of trying to kill Ovid Lewis at Ferris Farm September last year. He was also charged with forcibly confining Abigail and Kamoy Lewis and unlawfully wounding Tishon Lewis at the same place that day. Wednesday, prosecutors from the Director of Public Prosecution's office discontinued the case and the court dismissed all charges. Senior Magistrate Nayo Emanuel later signed an order to deport Campbell as a prohibited immigrant. He spent the night at the Immigration Detention Center ahead of his deportation flight, which was scheduled for earlier today. And let's tell you more about crime and justice because an 18-year-old accused of aggravated robbery and multiple firearm-related charges is behind bars after his first court appearance. Kina Joseph from Cook's New Extension woke up in his Majesty's prison this morning after senior magistrate Nayo Emanuel remanded him on several serious charges yesterday. He's accused of robbing Colt Minimart in Parham August 15 along with unlawfully possessing a firearm and ammunition. The incident reportedly ended in a shootout with police resulting in Joseph being shot and hospitalized. He was released from the hospital Tuesday and has since been charged. In other news at this hour, the police force has received a major donation to help in their efforts to keep the nation's roads safe. With our story this evening, here is Shana Keisha Francis. The police's traffic department received a boost in resources following a generous donation from two national youth ambassadors, Shaquan O'Neal and Jamal Federick. Mr. Kwame, sorry. Um, he would have told us what he need and then we say okay we're gonna get them and we put our resources together and say this as young leaders would have been best for us to show our appreciation for the traffic department and hopefully it will be an encouragement to others to make uh, their contributions to the police department reflector jackets and signal lights were among the items donated deputy commissioner of police everton jeffers welcomes the donation Officers will be out in the night and the uniform is gray and black. The reflector vest, that is a good addition 
at least you can see the vest from a distance because it actually reflects. The light, you can use them different ways. So you can put your vehicle at one end, stick the lights there, and it flashes so people know that there is something ahead. Acting Assistant Commissioner and Head of the Traffic Department, Elson Kwame, also expresses his gratitude. We very much appreciate our youth ambassadors and um, as I always say, the traffic department alone cannot fight our road network. We definitely need more partnership, we need more stakeholders to come on board and we really appreciate it to our youth ambassadors. And I, what really amazed me is that they are young people. You know, they are young people in the society and their gesture this morning showed that they are part of road safety. The initiative aligns with ongoing efforts to reduce road crashes and improve traffic conditions across the country. Shanakisha Francis, ABS News. Shanakisha, thanks. Meanwhile, head of the traffic department, uh, acting ACP Elson Kwame, says efforts are being made to ease traffic congestion in the capital. He's been engaged in meetings with the Attorney General and Public Safety Minister Honorable Sister Benjamin and other officials on this issue. Take a listen. I propose to them that we have to um, develop some of these secondary roads because some of them are in deplorable condition. We have to develop these secondary roads so that would, they could be used as alternative roads to ease the pressure from the major, major roads in Antigua Bay. But he says there are few roads that can be restored to help in that situation. There was a, a good road around Bowman due to the hurricane damage that and then it never fixed and that would be a very good road to alternate to go around the airport and you know, to ease the congestion, the pressure and the, and the South Sydney Wallens Highway. We are also looking at some areas in Scottsdale, some areas in um, Bellevue where you could move from Arlston Road, take you down to Bendel's Road and have a smooth flow. But these roads need to develop. Well, the senior policeman also encourages corporate Antigua to help. There are some good corporate citizens who could come on board. It's our country, and we have to develop our country. We have to beautify our country, and we um, we try our best to see how much we could open some of these roads, secondary roads, and see how best we could ease the traffic. Of course, uh, our top story this evening is about the fact that the government and the Lear Farmers Association have hatched a compromise in relation to egg prices, and it means that egg prices, the wholesale prices, will be at $13 per dozen for the next 45 days. And as we reported earlier, members of the cabinet gathered yesterday to consider a report from Agriculture Minister Honorable Anthony Smith Jr. on the matter. He's chairing a working group appointed by cabinet to review the proposed wholesale price increase on locally produced eggs. He spoke with us this afternoon. Take a listen. Uh, quite a good discussion about um, understanding that the government really supports the sector. We really want to see the sector go. We strive. However, while doing such, we also have to ensure that the cost of egg remains reasonable for consumers. All right, of course, uh, we, as we told you as well earlier on, uh, as a result of this fresh development, the government will reinstate the requirement for importers of eggs to pay all applicable duties and taxes. The requirement is also being reinstituted for importers of eggs to obtain a license from the Ministry of Trade. Of course, as we had told you last week, Cabinet at its meeting then, last Wednesday, had indicated a waiver of those requirements for the next 60 days to ensure that the market could be liberalized. So those restrictions or those requirements are back in, have been reinstated. Here's what Minister Smith Jr. said about that issue today. We will do a comprehensive study to understand the cost analysis of um, what does it really cost the egg farmer to produce a dozen eggs, and then we'll be able to work from there, trying to find other ways of, you know, bringing down the cost. Any support that the government would continue to give the farmers. Minister Anthony Smith, Junior Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Lands, and the Blue Economy. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to more of the national stories that we're closely following for you this evening, including news for those who are intending to uh, visit the Independence Food Fair on the 1st of November this year. The Festivals Commission has an important advisory for you. We'll tell you what that is upcoming, also coming up. Antigua Barbados Security Forces stepping up their game with cutting-edge drone training. Technology is a huge part of the police's and the Army's response to the uptick in crime. We'll tell you what this drone training entails. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. So let's
At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Caribbean Union Bank, we are committed to creating the kinds of products and services that you want and need. We are not just a bank. We are your partner on your journey to financial freedom and success because we are driven by you. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Caribbean Union Bank, driven by you. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. You're in tune with the ABS Evening News on air and online. More national news. If you plan to attend the Independence Food Fair this year, please listen carefully to our next report as the Festivals Commission is starting or sharing some crucial information about it. Ashana Keisha Francis reports. The Festivals Commission has announced a slight change in the location for the National Independence Day Food Fair for this year, a highly anticipated annual event celebrating the culinary diversity of Antigua and Barbuda. Chairman of this year's food fair, Gilbert Lodat, explains the reason for the change. This year there's cricket, and there'll be cricket on the day before the food fair, and cricket on the day after the food fair. Okay, now, as you know, seven, when there is a cricket match, you have to prepare the ground, prepare the area and everything. So that is the reason why we are outside of the ground. Organizers made the announcement on Wednesday. However, Lodat assures the food fair will be well organized. Everything will be the same. There will be hand washing stations, there will be um, light, there will be water for the vendors, pipe water. So everything will be there. The whole logistic will be there for the vendors. Yeah. He says, so far, registration for the fair has been overwhelming. Registration has been very good, I must say, and person is still coming, and we are hoping to end it by tomorrow. But then, after speaking to the director, which is the director of festival, Mrs. Um, O'Keefe, that we will extend it to next week. But it has been going quite nicely. We already passed the mark of 150. So we know and we only let we left fifty more space. With a commitment to promoting Antiguan culture and cuisine, the Independence Food Fair promises to be an unforgettable experience despite the slight adjustment. Shanakisha Francis, ABS News. Now Antigua and the Barbados Security Forces are stepping up their game with cutting edge drone training. 
I'll tell you more about this developing story because border security officials from the police, the Defense Force, and the Office of National Drug and Money Laundering Control Policy, the ONDCP, well, they have uh, st started a week-long program hosted by Aerodrome UAS Solutions. The sessions held at the Sir Wright F. George Police Academy featured hands-on lessons in drone piloting for military and peacekeeping operations. Chief of Defense Staff, uh, that's Brigadier Talbert Benjamin, says the training or the train the trainer exercise is part of efforts to boost aerial surveillance across Antigua Barbuda. As far as I've been advised by those managing the training. It has been very successful. Uh, the participants have all been very enthusiastic as we are introducing new technology um, within the, the, the ambit of the security forces. Brigadier Benjamin says they are looking forward to integrating this vital resource into their day-to-day -day, uh, operations as well. It is something that we have been using um, to a limited extent um, over time. Um, now we have been able to, with the support of the government, secure more resources um, that can assist us uh, to cover a wider, wider area in a shorter period of time. Now, the course led by Giovanni Ruiz and Stuart De La Rosa combines theory with practical fieldwork. Let's start taking sort of a look at the national developments that we're tracking on a very wet Thursday evening. Turning our attention to the weather report and forecast, we know you're all heirs. Patrice Edwards is here to talk us through why we're having so many showers and whether or not they will continue overnight into tomorrow. Patrice, everyone is hanging on to you every word. Over to you. Yes, it was a wet and wonderful Thursday, Garfio, across Antigua and Barbuda. And we have a bit of activity in the tropical Atlantic, so we got to get into that and whether we're going to advance that flash flood warning past 8 p.m. We'll get back to that when we come back. The weather report is brought to you by Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection. OMG. Hey, you see what's going on right now? The hurricane season is already kicking up a storm. I'm about to go to Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection for my shutters. What are you doing? With an extremely active hurricane season ahead, don't wait until it's too late to protect your home. Get your hurricane shutters from Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection today. Visit our showroom or contact us at 560-4532 or visit our website at shuttersinparadise.com. The weather report is brought to you by Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection. OMG. Hey, you see what's going on right now? The hurricane season is already kicking up a storm. I'm about to go to leave it in hurricane protection for my shutters. What are you doing? With an extremely active hurricane season ahead, don't wait until it's too late to protect your home. Get your hurricane shutters from Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection today. Visit our showroom or contact us at 560-4532 or visit our website at shuttersinparadise.com. And welcome back. Let's start off with the tropical Atlantic. So we're going to start in the west with Hurricane Helene that has been upgraded as of 7 p.m. to a Category 4. So when I, was, when I left the office, it was a Category 3. And there was some intensification that was forecast. So by 7 o'clock, it was confirmed as a Category 4 and expected to go inland hopefully by tonight into tomorrow. And there are some strong storm surges and strong winds associated with this system. There's some bands extending southward into the Caribbean over Cuba. And as we move further, we're gonna look at what happened across most of the Eastern Caribbean. See that large cloud mass associated with that impressive tropical wave that has given us some showers and expected to still give us in Antigua and Barbuda a bit of showers. So we see the tail end of that system moving across the area. Moving farther north, we have Tropical Storm Isaac that's still there. Not much in the way of development, but there is some expectation for the system to become a hurricane between tonight and tomorrow. So some improvement is expected and forecast. And if we look further west to the central tropical Atlantic, there's still an area of disturbance that has a high chance of development. The system is expected to be upgraded to a tropical disturbance um, depression may be around tonight into tomorrow so that 
update is something that we're looking at. At this time, as the system moves, we're gonna update that slide in a minute. System is expected to keep away from the Eastern Caribbean, but however, since it's so far east, anything is possible. This is something that we should still continue to mo monitor. So the system is expected to move into that area and become a possible tropical depression very soon and upgrade. So that's what we're looking at at the tropical outlook. Another area is expected to have a low chance of development over the next seven days, more in the Western Caribbean Sea. So we're looking for a bit of development Please continue to monitor. We're still in the hurricane season. Moving forward, Fantiga and Barbuda. Again, we had mostly cloudy skies and thunderstorms. A flash flood warning is in place until 8 p.m. tonight. This flash flood warning is expected to not be upgraded. We are looking for a downgrade, but however, the roads are still wet, a bit dangerous, so we do advise, especially motorists, to take your time out there and to, especially in showers, we do expect those showers to continue. Our high temperature was 32 degrees Celsius, and we had our winds mainly out of the south, and they were quite light across the area. So what do we expect right now? Again, it's just cloudy, some showers, light showers out on the outside. The winds are actually tapering off to near calm, variable at around two miles per hour, and the temperature is around 23 degrees Celsius. Now we expect those conditions to continue into tonight. So we have a chance of showery conditions and possible thunderstorms when we have a few heavy downpours. Our winds are expected to remain light and our temperature is expected to be 23 degrees Celsius. So what do we see when we look for tomorrow? mostly cloudy skies with a 70 percent so we see that moisture and instability lingering across the area and those light winds out of the south we expect it to be a little bit more on the showery side tomorrow and we have our sunrise at 5 57 and our sunset at 5 56 p.m for us tomorrow friday so the marine conditions 46 feet not much in the way of improvement in the just light seas, and we're looking at. And as we move into the next week, just to improve on our slides, sorry for the slow start. Start off with 70%, again, high chance of showers as we go into tomorrow. We expect that to increase on Saturday, and then a little bit more moisture coming into the area on Sunday. And again, Monday, a 40% light wind straight through to the period. So we're expecting it to be a little bit warm on those days that we have those 40% chances of showers. And our seas are gonna be quite low, not exceeding six feet during that period. Again, let me repeat the flashboard warning that we're having at eight, it ends at 8 p.m., expected to downgrade. However, please be cautious on the road this evening because showers are gonna still be around and we see it still have those wet roads. So motorists, please be careful. Back to you at the desk. Really appreciate it, uh, Patrice. So you're saying that it will move from a warning down to a watch like it. A watch and an advice. We're still looking at it at this time, expecting those showers, but the warning is going to be dropped at this time based on what I'm hearing out of the Met Office. So whether it's going to be an advisory or a watch is still something that we're monitoring because we see those showers coming in and possibly some thunderstorms with it. So we do expect to continue to watch that. But for now, we're going to hold with that drop at 8 p.m. Okay, all right, so at 8 p.m., no more warning, but it doesn't mean that you no. shouldn't be Careful. Uh, very watchful. Yes. All right, so uh, whether it's a watch or an advisory. Patrice, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thankfully, uh, the area not significantly impacted and expected to be impacted by any sort of uh, a cyclonic activity. That is the Leeward Islands? The Leeward Islands, no, not at this time, but however, you're still in September. Please continue to monitor. We have a system still to the east, and that's something that we are watching. And anything coming off of the coast, I see there's a little bit more development off the coast of Africa. Expect those tropical waves to be coming off. So these they still have to be monitoring the tropical Atlantic at this time. Absolutely. The watch for the word is vigilance. Yes, it is. And of course, we're helping you to stay alert as well with our features on Mondays and Wednesdays during the ABC News. Thank you so much, Patrice. Patrice Edwards with the Met Office, ensuring that we are your weather authority. As the weather breaks, as anything happens, the vicissitudes, the variables of the weather, the vagaries even of the weather, we're on it for you. We keep you across it. When we come back, we urge our viewers across all platforms, including Facebook, to stay with us for our regional developments.